Okay. Um, one uh, thing about Metoyim Kippur, if you didn't make your sukkah before, it says, brought down in Allah and that's our minig, that Metoyim uh, Kippur, then after Yom Kippur, you um, talk about the sukkah or start doing something in the sukkah because you want to go straight from the tshuva of Yom Kippur into doing more mitzvahs. Secondly, you don't uh, do Kiddush Levana until Metzor Yom Kippur. Thirdly, from Erev Yom Kippur in the morning, which this year would be Wednesday morning, there's no Tachanun until the end of Tishrei. Until after, not only Sukkot, but until, according to the Alt Rebbe, until the end of the month. So tomorrow is the last day of Tachanun for uh, probably 20 days. Because it's a Yom Tif, it's a holy days. There's a, the day between Yom Kippur and Sukkot is four days, corresponding with the name Yudke Vavke. Therefore, it says in Aloha, and it's brought down in Amin Hogam also, that the day after Yom Kippur, you're supposed to get up early to Davin to show that it's, it's called God's Nomen. It's called Hashem's name. The day after. Uh, what? Yeah, a chiv, according to our custom, a chiv doesn't daven for Yom only on a day with his musaf. The only thing, by Hanukkah, for Hallel, you change, uh, he doesn't daven ha- halal for the Yom but he davens, many people don't. But our custom is only on a day when there's musaf, that's when you don't daven. Okay, so starting Wednesday morning, there's no tachnun until, but Tuesday mincha there is tachnun. Okay, let's discuss a little bit, uh, building the sukkah, we discussed a little bit, let's talk about uh, the mitzvah of sitting in the sukkah. Now the Torah said, you have to sit in the sukkah seven days. Teshu doesn't only mean sit, it means you should learn, live in the sukkah seven days. Which means in Allah, whatever you normally do in your house, that's what you're supposed to do in the sukkah. You're supposed to, what it says in Allah, you're supposed to eat and sleep and learn and everything you're supposed to do in the sukkah. In fact, I mean, even before cell phones, there are many people that would sit Mabisha holding in the sukkah, they connected the telephone into the sukkah, and they would literally sit the whole day in the sukkah. And uh, here we're talking about air conditionings. But out east, the Mabisha have heaters, many people have heaters in the sukkah. Because in New York it's cold and rainy and everything. So they actually have, so, um, Another thing with the sukkah, the sukkah has to be treated extremely respectful. It's a holy thing, makif and dabina, like we said. Therefore, according to Aloha, you're not allowed to bring pot, pots and pans into the sukkah. It's not nice. Dishes you bring into the sukkah, pots and pans. But Poskim right, what happens if you're eating out of the pan, <laughs> out of the pot? So then obviously that's your plate. But you don't bring garbage bags in, garbage cans into the sukkah. It's just, the sukkah is a holy place. You have to treat an animal, an animal with a dog, ideally should not be brought into the sukkah. Huh? I understand my chicken in the dinner, but halakhically you can sleep in the sukkah? Halakhically you're supposed to sleep in the sukkah. In fact, sleeping is halakhically stricter than eating. Because halachically, eating a snack, you don't have to sleep in the sukkah. Eat in, eat in the sukkah. But sleeping, even a, a nap for 10 minutes, you have to go sleep in the sukkah. Why? Because when you sleep 10 minutes, you might end up sleeping three hours. So therefore, no, that's what it says in Allah. So therefore, it might come to be a, a more permanent level of a sleep. Okay. In Chabad, we don't sleep in the sukkah. In Bells, they don't sleep in the sukkah. I mean, in different places, because of this Kabbalah thing. Because of this Kabbalah thing. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's a mitzvah. You have to do my mitzvah. Where are you supposed to do it? Yeah, the oh, table. you mean on the floor? If it's under the table, you could do it. And then also, like, you're bringing garbage, uh, an empty bag to clean up the garbage off the table. I understand. So in the says you don't bring garbage cans into a sukkah. Uh, plastic bags, maybe not called a garbage bag. Right. I mean, until uh, whatever. In fact, it says in the if you're davening alone without a minion and you're able to have enough kavane in the sukkah, you have to daven in the sukkah. 
if you're able to learn in the sukkah, the reason why minyanim don't daven in the sukkah is because it's it's not conducive uh, to davening in a sukkah situation because it's open and but learning it ideally should be done in the in the sukkah. All those types of things should be done in the sukkah. Now the Rebbe Bachlal, is everybody was in seven, anybody was in seven seven knows it was the big big sukkah. And then the Rebbe had his own private sukkah right outside seven seventy. And in the later years, not too many people know about, it, but there was a the Rebbe had a sukkah where Rabbi Grona's office was. In other words, the opposite, when you come into Sem you go into Rabbi's office. If you keep going, there was a, like the old Viber show in the 770. So that was Rabbi Grona's office. So it was actually, they built a sukkah for the Rebbe there. That, like this Rebbe would come out for like a half an hour a day into his sukkah. But to that, we don't know how often. I mean, I'm sure they know, but the Rebbe used to go in there pretty often. Uh, take a drink or whatever, to whatever. So uh, there was a private, mamisha private sukkah nobody knew about. That was next to the rabbi's room. Okay. Who has the rabbi, rabbi rivers and stuff? Like it's the rabbi Gorin used to have it. He, he doesn't, he didn't have it. It belongs to Agur Sassidi Chabad. Right, but he's older. There are certain people that were in charge of, now it's, uh, it's it is in the rabbi's room and that's it. Do they give it? I don't know what they do now. They used to give it to Hassan, and now I don't know who's in charge of it. I don't know. Yeah, who does it? Okay, so they do do it. In fact, the Rebbe used to give out not only a Siddur, this is way before my times. The Rebbe used to give out the Mincha before Hassan. The Rebbe used to come out to Mincha, he would give a Hassan the Siddur. And he would tell him in Yiddish, he would say, I'll tell you, but now's good. You should ask for everything good. And initially, the Rebbe used to give out a gartel also. Gartel? A gartel also. To Davin Mincha the day before the wedding. His gartel. Well, a second, not his gartel that he used, but another gartel. Yeah, for the chasen. That stopped, I was told, because guys used to cut off a little piece of the gartel <laughs> from the strings hanging. They used to cut off. <laughs> so... But I never stopped uh, giving that. But the city is still gay. I, mean, I had to consider. I got to sit from the... What? No, we can rip a city. You're not going to sit there. Okay, um, next. Our custom is, again, this is not a headache in L.A., but uh, even if it's pouring, when halachically you don't have to sit in the sukkah except the first night, so Chabad custom is we don't eat or drink anything out of the sukkah even when it's pouring, pouring rain. We only eat and drink, only, even water, we just don't drink outside of the sukkah. Even if it's pouring rain and if it's something that you need to make a leisha basukkah, you, you make a leisha basukkah. I tell you, we once said in, in Lamed Ches, which was 77, the Rebbe had his heart attached me not said this. So a bunch of different groups of 10 guys walked to the oil and back. So that was one of the groups that walked. I was married already. So we walked to the hill and back, but on the way, it was still Shemini Atzeris. Because Rebbe had a heart attack the night of Shemini Atzeris. The next, right after the evening, we all went, well, I mean, different groups went to the oil, and Shemini Atzeris, we also don't drink out of the sukkah. And we walked, it took us four and a half hours to the oil and five and a half hours back, and we were in the oil 10 minutes. <laughs> it was, we came back at midnight along the way we were stopping the cops and everybody knew what was going on. All the cops already knew what was going on. They were giving us reports on the way, how the Rebbe is doing. Anyway, so along the way, we were dying of thirst. So somebody happened to tell us that there's a conservative temple not far and he thinks they had a sukkah. So we went off a little bit and we came to the, to the sukkah. So besides the fact it was not a high fence, it was locked, and there was nothing to drink. So he knocked on the neighbor's door, it was a Schwarz, the next door, I mean, sorry, African-American, next door, we knocked on the door, and they gave us a few bottles of water, we drank water, we climbed this thing, uh, 
<laughs> drank water in the sukkah, come back, continued walking to the oil. It was it was a very interesting walk. Mm-hmm.